thank you for coming to this presentation. I know there is another one, and when you have uh, you know, tracks in conferences, it's really hard to choose between presentations. So I'm Alex. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, and I think there are lots of you who don't know me, um, uh, I want to start by saying a few words about me. In uh, 2008, together with Juana, Juana was with me, and Ru, another colleague of mine, uh, we started a company uh, that's called Altom, which is specialized in software testing. Now, within Altom, I do lots of things. I work on testing projects, I do consulting for different clients, I do recruiting, and I do, I'm also involved in the sales process. So I talk a lot with clients. And uh, one thing about me that I think is really important is I like traveling. I, we drove basically for 11 hours to come here, so you can see that. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to work in Finland twice. I worked in Germany for a while. I worked in the UK. Uh, in Romania, I worked into the different cities. So I travel a lot. Uh, I like working project-based, and I do lots of small and medium-sized projects, meaning the uh, maximum project I did in the past six years was one year. Uh, I work with product companies and with services or outsourcing companies. Uh, I go to conferences, uh, attend. Sometimes I speak, but I also attend as, a, as, as you guys also. And um, another thing that I think it's important is in 2011, I co-founded uh, what it is, I think, the, the biggest community of testers in Romania together with a fellow tester. So um, whenever I, uh, I go to, uh, to different events and on the projects that I, uh, I work with on, I try to talk to different testers to get their view on testing. Because I work, uh, you know, the, the position that I have within Altom allows me to go to different business events, uh, networking events. I uh, interact a lot with some of our clients. So I get to talk to managers and with business representatives about their view on testing. And when I talk to testers, there are a few things that I'm quite interested in. And first one is, how does somebody get to be a tester? And most of the answers that I get is by chance. And I'm one of them. So when I was a student, uh, I never thought that, well, I'm going to graduate and I'm going to you know, become a software tester. I didn't even know there was this job back then. So uh, I think most of you guys maybe had the same, uh, the same experience. Uh, there was a panel discussion uh, yesterday in the morning. And I think Anya, if I pronounce it correctly, was uh, saying exactly the same thing. She ended up being a tester by chance. And um, the next thing that I, I uh, want to know about is, uh, how how else do you become to uh, do you get to be a tester? And uh, I'm not sure about Poland, but in Romania, it's more and more common that people want to do a career switch. So they want to change from you know uh, finance or banking or insurance to software because software is so cool. Uh, the pay is much better. Uh, the offices are much better. Working hours should be nicer, and the job seems more secure. And I've heard this in Romania. I've seen this in Germany also. You see it in Finland. So I think uh, you, you can. It's not really a, a country uh, thing that uh, we we see. Um, now, because most of the the people I talked to uh, didn't have a formal education about software testing. I want to know how they learn and how they develop their skills. You know, things like uh, active reading or uh, critical thinking or bug reporting or software systems architecture or uh, I know coding or any, anything that's useful for a tester. And uh, most of the answers that I get is I read the uh, ISTQB syllabus. 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 I think it's pronounced in English. Uh, some some people say that they passed the foundations exam. Uh, the question that I ask a lot is, what's the blog or article that you're following? Can you give me an example of something that you read that you found really interesting and helped you in your work? And very few people can name an article. Uh, the next question that I have is, what's the book on testing that you read? Tell me something. I, I was surprised to see upstairs so many books in Polish on testing. I don't think we have so many books in Romanian uh, uh, in testing, so I think you're doing a good job translating and writing about testing in, uh, or at least it seems to me, I don't know the quality of the books, but the, the quantity was quite big. So I was surprised uh, in this way. So um, these are, these are the, the kinds of answers that I get when I talk to people. Uh, now getting back, to, getting back to the managers that I interact with, um, most, most of the managers I, I talk to say that, well, testing is easy, anybody can do it. 
Uh, Rob Lambert had a keynote uh, session at Eurostar. Uh, dub is it better? You should you should tell me if you don't hear me. So um, had the Eurostar keynote uh, keynote at the Eurostar conference last year, and uh, one of his experiences, the stories that he he shared was that when he joined the company that he works with, uh, just before the release time, everybody that could move a mouse and push a keyboard was you know called the tester and they would just you know do whatever they could to test so I think this is one of the mindsets that you see um, another another thing that I, I hear often is that um, testers are failed developers uh, there is this guy in in uh, Sweden his name is I think if I pronounce it correctly because they they record me and this is going to end up on YouTube or somewhere so I think it's Richard Edgren it's really it's a really tough name he's a really a really cool guy um, and um, one of his talks at Eurostar last year, he, um, he, he, he told a story about him being a manager, leader of a testing team. And uh, another manager came to him and said, well, we have this colleague of ours. He's really bad at programming. Can, you, you know, can we switch him to testing? And he, he said, well, let's see if he's good at testing. And they had this small session. Uh, they did peer testing. And the colleague uh, was you know, running executing, not executing, it was, you know, um, using the application to test it. And um, at the end, he found no bug. And uh, Ricard was really surprised to, and said, well, did you, did you see nothing? And he was, no, everything was working just fine. It seems to me that everything is fine. And there are lots of bugs that he just missed because he didn't know where to look for. And uh, Ricard said, well, if he's a bad developer, it doesn't make him a good tester. So I'm going to say no because he's not a good tester either. So you should do something with his development skill if you want to, you know, develop or, or propose a development plan. And I think this is really important from time to time as a test manager or test lead to be able to say no if you don't think that one person is, um, has the skills to do the job. Um, there's, uh, there's one thing that I, I hear quite often. One of the meetups that we organized uh, in the local community in Romania, there was a, a manager uh, from a, one of the biggest outsourcing companies in, in, uh, in, in the area. And uh, we were talking about certifications, and one of the arguments that he had was it's much easier to sell testing if people have certificates. And my answer to that was if you compare uh, apples, if you want to sell green apples versus red apples, yes, I think this is really important. But if you're talking about services and bringing value to, the, uh, to, to your clients, maybe this is something else. So um, these are some of the answers that I hear quite a lot. So if I was to summarize, the things that I said before, I think there are mainly two mindsets that I see quite often. One is that anybody can do testing as long they, as they have a certificate. And there is no need to invest in specific skills. Um, there was a very interesting panel yesterday. I don't know if you know about the panel discussions. I really enjoyed the panel discussions yesterday. One was in English and I understood what they were saying. Uh, it was about courses and uh, people came up with different courses. And I think it's really interesting and it's really useful for you guys if you want to know more about this. Uh, maybe uh, Magda can share the, the... Okay, so it's already on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook account, so I don't know about this. So um, there are other ways in which you can uh, you know, uh, develop your testing skills. And um, the other mindset that I see quite often is that we don't need testers, everything can be automated. And in this case, the managers, uh, the, the test automation is a buzzword uh, and everybody talks about it. And the managers that work, that have this kind of you know, mindset, they want to invest only in coding and build management you know, uh, skills, so nothing else. And uh, the, reason, the reason I chose this topic uh, is because I think these two mindsets do a lot of harm to the job that we're doing. And um, there are, there, there are uh, two, two side effects that I want to talk about. I'm not sure exactly how this is happening in Poland. In Romania we see it quite often. Is that the, the students in software engineering, the really good students, they don't want to become testers. Most of them want to be developers or something else, but it's really hard to convince them to, to start the testing uh, role. And the other problem that we see quite often is that the really good you know, software testers that stay in the job for five, six, ten years, at one point in life they get really demotivated by the way the others see their job and they're doing a, a, a career switch. So they're switching to project management or I don't know, business analyst or something else because they don't like how you know, their job is seen. And um, 
it, on a personal level, uh, I prefer working with companies that don't have these this these mindsets because it makes my life so much e my life much um, much easier. So um, I think if we want to if we want to change the mindsets, I think we should start with our own mindset and then try to propagate this. And um, I think the 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 main idea of the presentation, how we, how it developed, was you know, trying to analyze what I did to myself and how, together with Wana and Ru, we tried to build uh, you know, uh, a team, an environment, based on the new mindset that we developed and how we took that further you know, uh, beyond the, the company uh, walls and uh, pushed this into the, the Romanian software testing community. So, uh, 2008, my mindset was not very different from the ones that I presented. So I was, I was considering software testing to be kind of like a service provider for the development team or development teams that I was working with. But before you know, becoming a, a, an external service provider, I never really understood what that meant. So at the moment when I had to explain clients what's the value of my services, why they should pay me for every project, or the moment that I had to uh, understand how to adapt my approaches and methodologies from one client to the other because the context changed quite a lot, I really understood what the service provider means in, in to the other teams in the software development. And um, there was, we had a few projects that were really bad, so with some failures. Uh, uh, we, we had some at the beginning we had some some tough times uh, another uh, really important aspect to, to mention for 2008 well end of 2008 beginning of 2009 uh, I think Poland was also hit by the economic crisis so we didn't have so many projects which meant for us we had lots of time to learn so I think that was like the most abundant learning period in my life uh, because uh, because of the failures that we had with a few projects well we it hurt us, let's put it this way, enough that we wanted to go out of the, our comfort zone and go and look on the internet what the other people are doing in software testing. And um, we started to, to Google things, read articles. Uh, it was, uh, we, we debated between the three of us lots of the ideas that we found online. So it was very dense in terms of learning. And it was then when we discovered, you know, testers like James, uh, James Bach and Michael Bolton um, James has a really, really good talk. I think it, it's at least seven, maybe seven years old. He gave in a, it's, it's a Google Tech Talk. It's a presentation he gave at Google. Uh, how to become uh, a testing professional, if I, if I remember correctly. It's a one hour talk. You can find it online. It's really interesting. Um, then we, we discovered uh, Goranka Bzedov. If you don't know Goranka, she used to be a performance engineer at Google. Now she's a capacity engineer at Facebook. She has at least two presentations online, which I think are really uh, interesting and useful for testers. Um, we, we rediscovered Cam Kaner. I say rediscovered because we knew about Cam Kaner, but for a while we just totally forgot about him. Um, uh, I joined the software testing Yahoo group. I don't know if you know about the software testing Yahoo group. This is uh, basically it was created by I think it was created by James and and Kim Kaner, and it was uh, during the time when people used more than 140 characters to talk to each other online. So they're using a lot more email and you know things like that. So that used to be quite quite a, a good source of you know getting people to uh, to exchange ideas and talk about testing. And there are also other, other interesting st stuff that we found online. And what we decided was to go you know, beyond software testing and try to understand more about software development in itself and also try to understand what it means to build a company because we were new into this. And again, Google Tech Talks are really good sources for this. TED, uh, uh, TED Talks, I don't know if you're uh, watching TED uh, videos, but I'm a really big fan of TED videos. And uh, those also were really good sources. Um, we uh, started to read uh, business books. We started to attend networking events. That was something new for us. We, we, we didn't do that before. I think nowadays it's much easier within the testing. I see you have a testing community here, so this should be easy to network between you guys and better understand what everybody is doing at their own company. But at the time, we weren't really uh, yeah, into this, so we started to, to, to go to different events. And all these, all these new ideas, somehow formed a new mindset, uh, a mindset that was uh, coined around the uh, 
the principles of the context-driven uh, school of testing. And I mentioned three of them because I, these are the ones that I relate the most to. And f for us, was, testing was much more than what I initially, I initially think or believed. Uh, technical is a technical investigation that requires specific skills. And there are no best practices. Every good practice has value, but it depends on its context. And uh, good software testing is a challenging intellectual process. And to be able to stay up to date with what happens in a dynamic environment like ours, continuous learning is required. So. This is, this is kind of the, 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 the new mindset that we, um, we, we, we reached to and the next point that we, um, we thought of was how can, we, how can we get this further. And in 2009 we hired the first people in the team. By 2011 we thought that things were going okay. We had a nice team um, and uh, this we thought up until the moment when three out of four testers decided to leave the team and this was in one month. So it was a really big hit for us and um, we, we went back and we analyzed how we recruited people and what kind of environment we have developed and um, uh, if, if it's really you know, in accordance with the new mindset that we, uh, with the new mindset that we had reached to. And what we realized was that we first started with uh, the, the recruiting process. And uh, we started to talk to fellow you know, uh, managers in the, in the industry. We talked to um, recruiters in the industry. We asked them what books can we read to learn because apparently we didn't know so much about recruiting. So we, we, it started uh, again um, a learning process. And um, we, uh, we ended up reading some really cool books. So if you're ever trying to recruit people, uh, Joel Spolsky, Smart and Get Things Done, it's really uh, easy to read book. If I can read it, everybody can read it. Um, Lou Adler's um, uh, Hire With Your Head. I don't know if you see the links, the, the titles from, it should be okay. Uh, it's also a really nice book. And what we also did, we went back to Kem Kainer's article on uh, how to hire, uh, or how he hires testers. It's an article that he wrote in 1999. So basically this makes it 16 years, 16 years old. So he could drive if it was, he, if it was in the States, he, he could drive right now. Uh, but it's really, uh, I think it's really still applicable at this moment. And um, there are lots of things that apply only to the uh, United States law and how, you know, the, the legal stuff. But in terms of building a team, how he conducts interviews, this is an article that you can find online and uh, I think it's very useful. So what we did, we, we redefined the recruiting process. We started from a recruiting process. If before we were uh, basically looking at the candidate knowledge, so do you know the definition of, what do you understand by, and things like that. We switched to um, a, a looking on uh, how is the candidate, what's the candidate ability to learn, what's, its at, what's his or her attitude. And so we switched to, to more um, look for learners with good attitude and less on, you know, on what they really know. So, no worries, uh, I just got scared. <laughs> so. Um, I think the interview, if, uh, I used to go to interviews just because I wanted to see how they conduct interviews. And I think the interview is the first evaluation that someone gets from a company. And that the interview process should be in sync with what happens within the company and within the team. And um, I think for, for testers, this should be a very good sign of what their job is going to be like next or should be. And if there is a mismatch between what happened in the interview and what the tester is actually doing afterwards, most people that I know of will be pissed off and they will change. They will say, you promised me something, you got me something else, and I want to I wanna see the things happening. And I think this is something that we try to do. We try to adapt the, the, pr the interview process to the uh, mindset that we had, and we try to transmit that uh, from the beginning to all the candidates that we, we had um, discussions with. Yeah. So the next thing that we tried to do was um, because the, the recruiting process was not the, you know, the, the only reason why people left the company. And we, we uh, went back and we analyzed what kind of environment we have built 
and uh, if it was really in sync with the mindset, the new mindset that we had. And we realized that, in fact, it wasn't. So we started to uh, understand what, what do we want to do, and we realized that we want to build an environment where learning can be really easy. So I think uh, in this direction, Wana had a much bigger uh, influence than I had. And um, what she likes sharing things. And uh, like anything, articles, videos, anything that can be useful. And at the beginning, she just started to share it with the whole team. And uh, some others picked it up, including myself. So right now, I'm, I'm a sharer also. So I, I share things that I find interesting on the internet. And basically, this kind of information is spread around the, is spread around the team. Uh, another project that uh, she started was Friday lunch uh, sharing sessions. So th the main idea is that on Friday at noon, the company buys the, buys the food. and. Uh, we have one to two hours sessions where we look at presentations, some of the colleagues uh, uh, present uh, the, the projects that they work on, things that they learned lately, uh, we, uh, um, yeah, we discuss uh, testing topics, anything that can be really useful on what we do on day-to-day -day basics. And um, this helped us a lot in uh, binding the team together because this is a way to switch information from one project to the other. And um, it, was a, it was a really good uh, uh, you know, initiative, and it has been going for more than a year now. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one debriefings. Um, we realized that we basically uh, a very good way of passing the, the mindset and the knowledge from one to the other was by talking to you know, our colleagues. And this was okay at the beginning when we were a small team, but the, the, the more we grew, it was, it, definitely becoming harder and harder to have one-on-one -on -one discussions very often with all of our colleagues. So um, this is something that uh, we're trying to, we try to define, um, uh, you know, uh, another mentoring layer to, to try to overcome this challenge, but it's still work in progress. Uh, the, uh, the library project. Uh, this is something that we, we started because we realized that we need to, to, uh, to get uh, books, really interesting books within the company. So anybody can uh, request any book that they find online if they can say why they think the book is useful. It can be about arts, philosophy, history, math, physics, computer science, anything that you can imagine. But they have to give an argument why they think the book is useful. It can be literature if they really want to, so anything. And so in time people started to recommend books, so we have like, a, I don't know, once every X weeks, months, whatever, we just order them from Amazon and they, uh, we add them in the library, uh, office library. Uh, another thing that we started to do uh, was to involve our colleagues in different trainings. Um, uh, BBST, I don't know if you know about uh, this training, Black Box Software Testing, was uh, initially developed by Kem Kainer and James Bach. And uh, it's an online training uh, uh, Initially, it was delivered through AST, Association for Software Testing. And um, uh, we tried to get involved as participants, but also as instructors. Another training that we, uh, we tried to uh, bring in, in our team was Rapid Software Testing by, by James and Michael. And um, we, we tried to organize it also. We, we also have an office in Helsinki. So we organized it in Helsinki and in Romania. We did it in Cluj and in Bucharest. And I think uh, we tried all our colleagues to, to participate in the trainings. We do open trainings so anybody can join, but our colleagues, of course, have priority. Uh, another thing that we try to do a lot is to uh, uh, encourage our colleagues to go to conferences, to speak at conferences. There are lots of conferences in Europe where you can go with for free, even at Eurostar, they give lots of free tickets. You just need to participate in some contests. Or, uh, well, this is Eurostar, but there is a really cool uh, conference that um, it's called KitCon. It's Continuous Integration and Testing Conference. It's organized by, 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 the guys from, by two guys from the States, but they do it in the States, in Europe, and in Asia. And that's a free conference. Uh, they do it around Europe. This year is going to be in Helsinki, for example. Um, and it's, there are lots of conferences where they can go as participants or as speakers. Um, 
we also encourage them to go to workshops, to get involved in the testing community, to deliver presentations or to uh, or, 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 or workshops. Yeah. Um, we, we st in 2012 we started an internship program, and uh, which was okay. But we, last year we realized that it wasn't that okay as we thought. So we we swipe away well, the, like the the things that we were we did before, and we um, try to replace it with uh, like a learning plan for for an internship. And then from there we try to adopt it to uh, also our colleagues. So. I know that all this seems really nice on the PowerPoint, but in real life, things aren't as nice as we want it to be. So one of the, uh, one of the things that I already told you about is the briefings require a lot of time. So uh, when you're uh, a team of four people, you can, you can have discussions with every team member and things are going in the right direction. When the team grows, uh, it gets complicated and developing the, the, the mentoring skills takes time. Uh, the library project, it's really cool. But what's the use of having books if nobody reads them? And uh, next point is, uh, if I read the book and Alec reads a book, uh, we might understand different things from the same book. So that's another problem. And um, to try to uh, mitigate this risk, um, Wana started a, a, like a reading club within the company. The first, uh, the first session uh, was uh, really cool. Only three, pe three people showed up. Second session, we had six people. So apparently it's growing. We don't know where. So it, we just had two sessions. But it was very interesting to uh, you know, try to, to read in parallel and then try to uh, comment on what we understood from the book, uh, the stuff that we read. Um, one aspect that's really that's a, that's a key learning point for myself. Everybody learns in their own rhythm, so my my rhythm is going to be different than Alex. I'm going to take, I'm going to use his name because I know him the best, so I know he's not going to be upset on the bad jokes that I'm going to do on him. So um, I'm going to his his read like learning speed is going to be different than mine, and my expectations sometimes were a little bit too harsh. And uh, in this regard, something that I had to learn myself was to understand that everybody learns in their own rhythm and that I should be less critical or less you know, demanding from our colleagues and that I should pay attention to the other's feeling when you know, uh, delivering feedback and things like that. So, uh, it's been more than three years since we started to implement the new things and I think currently we have a, you know, like a core team that um, is in sync with the, the uh, new mindset that we developed on testing. And I think right now things are going much better than it used to be before. But this was not enough for me. And um, as I, I told you at the beginning, um, I, in 2011, I co-founded the, what, what's it, the Romanian community of testers, or one of the Romanian uh, uh, communities. And um, but Catalin, the guy that you see here, uh, I should have a pointer, but it's not visible. Sorry? It's not working, okay. On the display, okay. Yeah, Catalin, uh, he organized the first testers gathering in Romania that I know of. And it was, uh, this was around in July 2011, and it was then when I presented my first talk in front of testers. And um, one month later, uh, I had the chance to participate at CAST in Seattle. CAST is Conference of the Associ Association for Software Testers. And when I returned to Romania, I was so full of energy and, you know, I was like, all these new ideas and uh, it's, it's a conference made by volunteers. It's really cool and I wanted to share this with everybody in Romania. So I met with Catalina and we decided to do four mini peer conferences, one day events in four main uh, cities in Romania. So it's Cluj, Yash, Bucharest, and Timisoara. So these are like the, the four main um, IT cities. And we started this project with the idea that we're gonna build a national community where we can push this new mindset, this new idea on testing, that we can be real professionals. And uh, we, today, the community on the platform, like on the online platform, counts around more than 1,000 members. Uh, there are monthly meetings held in every, um, in every chapter, we call them chapters. 
and uh, we try to co to work together with other communities. Uh, for example, in Cluj, we worked with the uh, Mozilla community. Uh, they did several workshops together with us. In Timisoara, they work with the Agile community. We try to we try to bring um, uh, speakers, yeah, from uh, outside the software industry. So we had a psychologist that delivered the talk. Uh, on how testers can be seen as the bearer of bad news and how we can communicate in our findings in a more uh, efficient way. We had a project manager that uh, told how she views the interaction with testers. She received feedback from the community. So we try to do all these kinds of things. Uh, we try to bring uh, you know, international speakers to Romania. We had a webinar this year with Alan Richardson and uh, it was on Hangout and all chapters put, uh, could participate. Um, we had Michael Bolton last year in Cluj and in Bucharest. We organized a peer conference with James Bach and with Margaret Puhayagvi. So we do kind of all kinds of events where you know we try to get people to Romania. Sometimes it's easier than to fly somewhere else. So again, all this seems nice, but when you get to challenges, uh, we've had a few. So I think, uh, looking back, I think we were really lucky because in 2011, Romania was not ready for communities, I would say. So um, there, were, there was a big reluctance from companies. Uh, we received emails saying that we won't let our colleagues to join your community. You just want to recruit them. And we, it was really funny because it's like you can't control what people do in their free time. But I think managers kind of panicked because, yeah, yeah we will steal all their employees or something. Uh, one, um, yeah, we had one, one guy told me that um, uh, it's one, one of the biggest company in, in Cluj. It's 10 minutes, okay, thank you. One of the biggest companies in Cluj, they, they, I think they have more than 600 uh, employees. And uh, he told me that uh, I will recruit his, uh, his team members. And I told him that our office space is not enough to put everybody on top of each other. So it's really a small office space. So he shouldn't worry about this because I cannot take all of them. Um, so uh, this was one of the, the things that we struggled with at the beginning. Second is uh, the, the value of the community is given by its members. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of certifications. Um, I think there are more valuable ways in which we can develop skills and abilities that are useful. But still, there are chapters that promote certifications. The good thing is that now, due to this community, we have the common ground where we can talk about this and debate on which is a better way and how we can develop our skills better. Uh, one and a half years ago, we realized that we have four communities, not one national community. So what we did was uh, to organize one of, one of the facilitators. Uh, we call facilitators the organizers that take care of the you know, local chapters. One of the facilitators uh, said, let's do a gathering, meet somewhere in the middle of the country, and you know, get to know each other and talk about our problems. And this was end of 2013. Two weeks ago, we had a second meeting like this. And uh, like every chapter was every chapter was re represented. Another issue that we had was testers don't get involved. Last year, one of the biggest things that we were able to do, we did a partnership with the Eurostar. And they offered a free ticket for one of the members. So the facilitators from the, f the four chapters, you know, like 10 or more people, we thought about the contest, to be fair, we had rules and everything. And only four people, uh, submitting something for the contest. We're more than 1,000 people in, in the whole community. This was really disappointing. Uh, it was heavy work for the facilitators. Eurostar was giving for free a 2,000 euro ticket and nobody wanted it. Or not enough people wanted it. So we still have the involvement that we need to work with. We, I don't have a solution for this. Uh, when we met uh, two weeks ago, there were a few suggestions. So I think we're going to start to implement some of them. So um, I want to I want to go back to um, to the initial mindset that uh, I was I was talking about, and maybe uh, most of you guys have already forgot about this, and maybe yeah you already uh, relate more to this new mindset. But if some of you are still stuck with this mindset, I'd like you to think about three things. And the first thing is. Why would anybody take my role serious if I don't take my job as serious as possible? 
the next thing that I would like you guys to think is how can each of you learn as much as possible on testing and on related stuff? And how can each of you act as leaders within your teams or your companies or your communities, because you have a really great community here, to push these new ideas and to join forces in changing the mindset? And I think if we want to change something, we need to join these forces. Uh, now, it's been more than six years uh, since, I started, uh, since I started on this path. And um, one thing that I learned, it was, uh, it was quite challenging to work on this presentation, uh, uh, sometimes depressing when I realized that uh, I, I uh, wanted to do so many things and I was able to do so few things. So uh, it's quite impossible to change somebody's mindset. It's impossible to change our mindset, nonetheless the other people's mindset. But uh, what I realized at the end is that reaching the goal is not the purpose, but enjoying the journey. And what I realized was that I was the one that had the most things to win or to gain throughout this, you know, trying on changing mindsets. And I would like to ask you to also try and see for yourselves how this would work. Am I on time? Thank you. I think I'm done. Okay. 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 Uh, my question is because you, for example, you were talking about talk with psychologists that uh, why testers are the person who bring bad news and how to how to avoid such situation. Can you sh shortly describe like what are the solution in such situation? Yes. Um, I think uh, uh, the, the Anto. It's her name. She uh, she recommended uh, uh, two books. Uh, that I, I think are really useful. Uh, I don't remember the name of the author. Wanna maybe you can help me? Yeah, Brad Planton, and it's um, it's it's a book on. Can you say it louder? Practicing radical honesty, and it's a book on how we can communicate, but at the same time, be aware of the other's feelings and be true to ourselves. And uh, there is another book that she recommended, and it's. Uh, Oh, have you read it? Yes. I have. It's one of the books I bought for the library. I never read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm on the list with the, yeah. But uh, I it's on my list. Yeah. Oh, why well, everybody else is a hypocrite? Yes, also because you always think about developers that they're mean and the project manager didn't deliver something on time and things like that. So. These are two things. Thank you. I have a question about sharing knowledge in team. Yes. And uh, when you are working with your clients, because I understand that you are a tester that is outside of the company, so you are working in many different projects. How was uh, working the sharing knowledge with the guys in the other side of the paywall? I rarely think of it as the other side of the paywall. Well, yes, you, but how is from the other side, how they see it and how they were uh, eager to share their knowledge with you? Now, this is very interesting because it depends on the project. Uh, I was, uh, last year I spent a lot of time in Germany and uh, it, was, uh, it was a project where we had to basically take over their testing department. So the, the, the project was so that we would replace the testers on the team. And we had one year to get as much knowledge as we could so in that case they weren't very friendly but it really depends on the, on the on the project uh, we work a lot client side and we work side by side with uh, you know testers from the team and we don't have any issues uh, we work with uh, adobe has an office in bucharest and we worked a lot with them with their testers with their developers it's clear from the beginning that our job is not to take their job. Like it was clear for, for, for the Germany project that our job was to take their job. So um, it really depends on the, on, the, on, the contest, on the context, yeah. You said that uh, it's uh, really hard to get people involved and that you had some discussion and you have some suggest suggestions for that and can you share this with us? I can see that one of suggestions is uh, take a beer. <laughs> 
but I think that uh, during work is uh, rather not acceptable. Yeah, no, uh, the, the involvement I was talking about, uh, we sometimes have it within the company, but the involvement I was referring to was within the community. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I'm asking about uh, getting people so, involved. Uh, we do have beers. So the way the way the meetups are organized is like every Wednesday, the, every first Wednesday of the month, we have a meetup, where depending on the chapter, we have 15, 20, 50 people participating. So it depends on the subject, on how popular is the subject, how many buzzwords you have in the title. So if you put a, a tool and test automation and agile, lots of people will come. Uh, if it's more philosophical, kind of like thinking, not so many. But uh, I'm, being, I'm being mean right now. So. Uh, that I'm being mean, I know. <laughs> and um, so uh, after, to, to get back to the, the point, after the meetups, we go to beer. But you know, you have, you have members that have kids at home and they say, well, I'm here from 6.30 to 8.30, I'm off because my, my kids needs me. So I think it's uh, this kind of case, I would say it's absolutely normal for them to live. And if we take the socializing only for beer when they cannot attend, it's not enough. So we should, we should also do some, something else. What we did, and I think it was really cool, in Cluj we organized, the, the community name is called, if I was translating it, it's called the testing camp. So it's like camping. So we organize for two years in a row, we did a testing camp in the mountains. So a bunch of testers went in a, what do you call this, a chalet? What, like a bed and breakfast? Yeah. And we spent the whole weekend doing testing. The first, the first edition, we did mobile testing. There are really cool pictures with the setup, with all the, the devices. Um, for two days, we did this. In the second edition, we had discussions on basics of, uh, no, get, get back to basics, get back to basics. That was the, the title. Where we had discussions about, you know, what we call basic things of testing. And the second day, we had an intro to performance testing. And that's really good for, you know, getting to know each other. Because you, you can have beer all day long and also discuss about testing. Yeah, so uh, that, that's one thing that we do. Beer helps if people enjoy alcohol. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are other things that we thought to do. So uh, one, one problem we discussed yesterday uh, with uh, Alec and with someone else. I don't remember Polish names. It's easy, it's easy, Alec, because it's like my name, but it's just Alec, so it's easy to remember him. Um, um, Lukasz. Yes, I remember. And uh, we were talking about um, the fact that uh, at the meetup, lots of people say that they come, but at the end, maybe 25% won't show up. And uh, there are people on the waiting list that cannot come because you know they couldn't enter and things like that. And one of the proposals uh, we thought of was just take the, you know, the limiting out and see how many people will come. Uh, one hour is the point, if we have no limit, nobody will come because they, they don't care about the limit. So uh, my proposal was to pay a not attending fee. So you give money, if you attend, you get your money back. I'm kidding, but because uh, we're trying to, to get all these kind of, you know, irrational tricks to get people to, uh, Stay focused. Uh, I, you should cut me. Yeah, I, I'm trying to do, uh, okay. but very politely. <coughs> so we'll finish here.